first of all, welcome. Welcome to my presentation about AI art. I My first career was a software engineer. My later career was as a physical artist, meaning I made art with fabrics and designs and textures, and then, of course, all kinds of different paints and then whatever else I could find to incorporate. So I got really excited about art at that point at the age of 50. And then along came digital art. So I jumped right into that. And then along came shortly, really, for me, right after that was AI-assisted art. And then I got really excited because that was the opening for me to marry art, my techn technology background, my engineering background, and art into the same place. And then I began really having loads of fun. So just why should people learn AI art? Well, here's the deal. <laughs> AI art taps into your creativity in a way that nothing else can. So you don't have to know how to draw stick figures, especially with AI these days. You don't have to know how to draw. If you know some basic understanding of your own language, whatever language is your native language, you can actually type that into many of the AI art apps. It will understand what you're saying and attempt to generate an image based on the words that you put in. So I find that super exciting. Uh, so before I go further, let me, I may need to shop, stop share here. I would like to give you a quick example of what you can do just with ChatGPT, for example. So instead of, hold on a moment, instead of showing it to you in real time, because that does tend to get kind of slow, I went ahead and pre-did them so you don't have to sit there and wait the 30 to 16 seconds for the art to create. So over in ChatGPT, I wrote image, a cute cyberpunk punk cat drinking a cup of coffee. And about 30 to 60 seconds later, this is the image that ChatGPT created for me. So that's kind of cute. I'll show you some more examples as we go further along in my presentation. So now let's go back to my slides and we'll go here. So again, what are the benefits of AI art? Not only can you use it for art's sake, which of course I love to do, you can use it to create business logos, marketing materials, you can use it to ideate. In other words, when you have ideas that you want to test out, going to a, a, an AI art app like ChatGPT or MidJourney or many others and just typing in the words that you're interested in, it will give you an image. And sometimes that image especially if it's not exactly what you thought it was, will give you better ideas of either how to create better art with it or how to modify your words so that when you speak of your ideas to other people, they will better understand what you're talking about. So one of the things that I remember not too long ago was an interview with Deepak Chopra. And one of the questions that was asked of him, which I found his answer was super interesting, he was asked, who would you or what type of person, what type of profession would you always include on one of your development teams? And his answer was interesting. He said it was an artist. He said no matter whether it's engineering or how to give presentations or education or even, you know, some of the, the, of the things that he talks about, he says the artist will always have a completely different perspective from everybody else on the team. And although that perspective might, may or may not be incorporated into the end result, what it does is it gives people yet a more interesting uh, perspective to uh, think about. Sometimes it's a more intuitive approach, and sometimes that can change the entire course of a project, hopefully for the better. So I found that answer very interesting, and I find it so true. So, for example, jumping back out of here for a moment... Just in my background alone, I have generated images for, let's get it backwards, all right, a, a logo for a friend of mine. She's a genealogist. She is the family tree detective, and it might be a little hard to see there, but you can see the tree, of course, and she's got her, you know, detective spyglass and her trusty dog next to her because 
that's an integral part of how she does a lot of her genealogical research. And then just above that, there's a clock with a bunch of things coming out of it. This is for a friend of mine who has a Facebook group called Expand the Business. And his whole idea is to teach systems to help you save time and make more money. So that's the image that I came up with using AI. And then in the upper right corner on my screen is a building that kind of has some pink neon lines. And that was for a friend who has a Facebook group about jobs in Colorado. And she was so thrilled with that because it helped her represent that. Now, on the images on my left, so my mother recently lost her battle with cancer. But as part of that journey, I would generate these images that were more comforting and healing for me and sometimes with her. So things like the heart, up, heart above and the flowers in the corner. And then to my left, cats and dogs in crochet, by the way. So <laughs> just for fun, I never learned to crochet myself. But if you did, then you might love, you might enjoy using an AI art app that shows you what the end result might be. So, and then my, my oldest granddaughter recently graduated from Jacksonville University with a degree in marine biology. So of course I couldn't resist sending her pictures of dolphins. So all this goes to show is there's personal benefits as well as business benefits. And again, like I said, the idea that you can ideate so many amazing things just using AI. When I talked about logos, for example, I went over to ChatGPT and I said, please create a logo for a local courier company that I completely made up. Name Speedy Rabbit. Make it dark blue on a white background as a minimalist design. And this is what it came up with. Well, the rabbit's kind of interesting. It does indicate a speedy rabbit. However, you'll notice that the text is really awful. And that's a lot of the problems with some of the AI art apps. But I happen to know one where that's not true. So because of that, I said, all right, write a prompt to create the above logo using ideogram because I that's the one that I use. And it created me this one, create a minimalist logo for a local courier company named Speedy Rabbit. And then it goes on to describe more things about the what the logo should be. And so I just copied this and I went over to Ideogram and I pasted it up here in this top part. And then over here, I clicked generate and it gave me four choices. And as you can see in every single one of these where it does use words, it has them spelled properly. <laughs> so sometimes it's a matter of just using the right tool. So I wanted to go ahead and share that one. Now, the other things that I want to mention is that there's some other really great tools. So for example, I mentioned MidJourney earlier. So for, by the way, for MidJourney, again, it when it started, it started out with the ability to do it from your phone using another tool called Discord, which I won't explain here. But... When you have generated a thousand images or more, they invite you to use their desktop version, which apparently is still in kind of a test mode. So anyway, I took that my earlier prompt of a cute cyberpunk cat drinking a cup of coffee, and these are the four images that it came up with. As you can see, very different, just using the same words. So the part of the reason I'm bringing that up is one of the questions people have is about the ethics of using AI. You know, what happens when you copy somebody else's prompt and you use it? What are the copyright implications? So the copyright implications are probably still being debated, but for the most part, especially if you go read the terms and conditions of whatever app you're using, it will indicate whether you can use them. And for the most part, you may freely use any of the AI images it generates. You can use it for printing coffee mugs and t-shirts and selling them. You may use it for illustrating books, you know, for all kinds of things that you can imagine that you might use art images for. And I find that really, really exciting. So part of the future of AI I see in its future applications, we are, uh, I'm only talking here about still images. I'd like you to consider things like augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality. There's a whole new field 
that you may have noticed already is called immersive exhibitions. These are starting to pop up all over the world, particularly in Japan. But also, there was a, a, an art exhibition that has come through Disney a few times. One was Van Gogh, where they took Van Gogh images and they projected them in an immersive way across the entire gallery. So no matter where you walked, you felt like you were walking in a Van Gogh painting. Well, that's only the beginning. You'll be there. They've already done that with now some Disney replays of not Disney movies, but scenes from Disney movies. Now you feel like you're walking in amongst the characters and it's a traveling exhibition. So you can go to Denver or Chicago or other major cities where these things are popping up. Uh, enjoy an immersive uh, experience. I'll touch on a little bit. There's a whole thing about blockchain technology and Web3. And the idea with that is that will, again, redefine what we think about in terms of copyright. Just super briefly, without going into a whole bunch of detail, blockchain technology allows you to establish authenticity, credibility, and the ability to buy and sell and trade art. And the artist will continue to get royalties on each successive sale. This is a first in history. It's never been done in the world of art history, unless, of course, you publish your art in books and, and reproductions like posters and that kind of thing. So there's so many exciting things happening with AI art. The last thing I want to mention is that AI art, AI is a collaborator, not a definer. So when you put in, so for example, when I created, I created these impressionist style painting of sailboats on a river in landscape mode. This is what it came up with. And I don't remember that much from my impressionist art school days, but it's probably very similar. Just for grins, I did the same thing in ChatGPT, and that's what it came up with. I'm not sure I would necessarily call it impressionist, but it's impressionist style, right? The idea being that using AI allows us to create completely new, different art. I've only barely scratched the, scratched the surface here. What you can do with AI as your collaborator is you can generate whole new styles of art. You can have conversations and then have AI illustrate your conversation. Uh, it, we're only just beginning and it's very exciting. And one more thing, <laughs> AI helps democratize the ability to create art all over the world not just because of the languages, but because AI just makes it easy and you don't have to get mad at your art teacher for rejecting your art. <laughs> AI will never reject your art. <laughs> so so how, do, how do people get started with this? Well, of course, one way is to, is to sign up for one of my art courses, which Alex posted in the chat and he may post again for anybody who came in later. I've mentioned, I've touched a little bit on the future of AI art. Oh, I forgot to mention text to video. There are some really fabulous text to video applications now coming out. My favorite at the moment is the Dream Machine by Luma, but there's also Runway. I know ChatGPT or the, sorry, uh, OpenAI, the creator of ChatGPT, is working on one called Sora, S O R A, which is not yet publicly available. But there's others as well. So the, the Synthesia and others, we're just beginning. And that's why so I'm so excited to share this. Of course, you could sign up for my, this is my free course. I have another paid course on the same platform that for $47 will teach you how to use ChatGPT along with other, some other apps to create art as well as logos. You can just go download a free art app on your own and just begin playing with it. There are lovely AI art communities on Discord, Facebook, X, probably Reddit, and some other places. And lastly, if you just want to follow what I'm doing, what the latest developments are, feel free to sign up for my free newsletter, which is basically the tearsoffactor.com forward slash curious soul, S-O-U-L, newsletter, because I'm interested in preserving our human souls, and as well as digital souls as we proceed down this journey together. And I suppose that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but now you know a little bit more about my philosophy. 
the art would not exist without the humans driving uh, what it means to have art. And lastly, <laughs> I may have gone a little bit fast. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to attend my presentation. And at this point, I'm very happy to answer any questions you might have.